Good evening and welcome to the um, Board of Selectmen's meeting, October 17th, 2019. Um, we'll start off the meeting with citizens' comments. So do we have any citizens' comments? I think um, the outcome of the special town meeting was a good outcome. I was, I was glad to see that both Warren articles passed. I think that was the way to go. It was my personal preference. And now the hard work starts. Yes. <laughs> but, you know, I, I, I felt really good, and I, people were extremely respectful. They made good arguments. The presentations were good. So I, I thought it was a very, very good outcome for the meeting. Can we so we appreciate, you know, all the all, all your work. work and support and the work of the of the the committee. You know, they really did include all stakeholders and I think at the end of the day the result showed that. Can we give a, a quick thank you to Felicia Hoffman and everybody to, who put right. the meeting together. As well as our vendors who provide the electronic voting, mm -hmm. which went flawlessly, right. really speeds the meeting along. The only issue we had was that larger screen gives you less space. <laughs> well, I would, would just say I think there were two things where, and first of all, I haven't seen that big of a turnout right. in a long time. And so, early. So, yes. So kudos to the committee who, who did so, such great publicity and got people out there. Um, but also the congeniality in the way, I mean, people were just, my husband and I were sort of sitting in a seat of like 50, maybe 60 year olds, and, and I was really pleased because I wanted to hear what they were saying. There was no, you know, like jabbing, or, they were so respectful of everything, and I think the seniors were like mine, and that was the highlight I thought for, I'm sure what we went through last year. Yeah, yeah that's very, really very nice. true. We, ha we have to coordinate our, uh, our meetings with the high school drama clubs because the stage was built and that facade was, was actually part of the stage floor, so we couldn't move. Oh, I did not realize that. Yeah, it, was, it was a little be. squished up there. But, <laughs> but it looked very uh, relaxed. And, uh, we couldn't move. Once you pulled your chair in, you, you were done for the night. So. All right, so, so the first item of business we have this evening is we have members of the Water Resource Committee here, and we had, um, we had asked a couple of questions related to the testing, and we submitted them to you earlier in the week, and I believe that you all have, have some answers for us. So how would you like to do it? Should I just well, recite the question no, and then? Well, well here, I, I'd like if you could leave Board's indulgence, I'd also like to be able to introduce material that came up over the past month and uh, since August regarding colonial. And this is only factual material and nothing more. But, but, but it, this it, evening we're discussing well, the water that, resource. May I finish speaking? It is critical that this information be made public to the citizens because there is a three week window in which they can respond. Now, if it's not done here, we'll have to find another mechanism for, ex for providing that information. All right, so I think this is, doesn't have anything to do the, with the water resource. It has something to do with colonial water that you'd like to present. Well, there's a dramatic overlap, if you will remember, because the water resource committee was started with specifically the issue of the public water supply companies. Well, yeah. the step back the water resource committee's charge was to give us a baseline of groundwater so, level so that we and would know uh, whether or not anecdotally the water table is dropping so well, that we would have evidence that was the I, I can only assure you that the information that's available only this past week yep. could you just state who who you are Felix um, just to kind of back Jerry up a little bit, I understand that the colonial piece is not on the agenda today, um, and you're probably concerned about open meeting um, concerns. Based on the exigency in Jerry's voice, how he's explaining it, and that that's a very limited time window, um, I'd ask the board if they would consider adding this on as a last-minute item 
under matters not provided and matters not provided for or foreseeable within the last 24 hours, and there's an exception um, to the open meeting law. Is that something we can do? Yeah, that's fine. I think okay. The chairwoman was looking. Like, Jared, if I may, I think the chairwoman was looking. Perhaps we could focus on the water Order, resources and then we can go into the other water. Right. After that. Okay. 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 Desk, so it could be right. on there no, I, I appreciate that. Thank so, you. Jerry, before you begin, can, can we just, um, can you explain the, the three week window for which citizens would yeah, apply absolutely. to um, absolutely. one part? Uh, this, in a sense, goes back to the 1970s when I and Ray Rivers and Roger Marcus uh, were in the same boat as we sort of are today with the same with the predecessor company, and it deals with regulatory matters at the state level. Uh, I've been very intimately involved with personnel at the DPU and personnel at the DEP, including the individual who's in charge of all the state's public water supply drinking water program. And on Thursday, he followed up with me an earlier conversation that I had with him when I was in Los Angeles several weeks prior, that the permit, which I have brought copies for you since it was indicated that you may not even know that you have copies of the permit, which was issued in 2010, has some very specific language in it, which is problematic. The permit actually has expired, as have all public water supply company permits expired, but were automatically extended while the state chose to wait to see how they would proceed in regulating public water supply companies. They've now made that determination, and the individual in charge of the drinking water program uh, at back in end of September when we were on the phone from Los Angeles indicated that he had more information and on Thursday he, he and I had a lengthy conversation in person and he indicated that Colonial is now in the process of having to file a renewal of their permit to act as a public water supply company. As, as are all companies. Uh, no, no. It, well, yes, all are. The date, though, is re relative to. The only one I know of date of is Colonial. I'm sure all of the others are in the same boat. But with respect to Colonial, uh, he said that, and again, it was 5 a.m. in L.A., and I, and I asked him on Thursday if he remembered exactly which date, because they varied by company, and he didn't remember. So it's either November 9th or November 13th that is the deadline for Colonial to file an application for a renewal of their permit. It is rather obvious that if anyone has information that they would like to supply the DEP, it must be timely supplied. And that's my point. Okay, hold on. Two things. The renewal happened automatically. It, it did in 2013. Mm -hmm. It was then extended to a date to be determined by the state, which has now been determined. Okay, so automatic extensions are a matter of course, happen all the time. And right, and now, and now they've put guidelines so in place. Got, it's not a guideline. They, they said to all of the companies, and I don't know the terms of the other companies. We only talked about Colonial. He indicated, he stated that Colonial has been told they must file for a renewal. They were told that some weeks ago, and, and the deadline for their submittal is either November 9th or November 13th. And that is the issue of timeliness. So Colonial's responsible for submitting their renewal, and Correct. your and the urgency for the urgency goes to the fact that the permit which was issued issued to them on December 13th. 2010 had a number of conditions in it which have not been satisfactorily met at any time in their operation since the date the permit was issued. Whether it was, and again, I know you've seen these before, but I'll provide them again. Uh, but isn't it the Mass DEP's responsibility for to compliance? For compliance? It, it, it wouldn't be our responsibility. It's not your responsibility. It, it is the issue of the public has an opportunity to provide comments. Okay. 
and that's what I want to reiterate what Jerry is saying. The purpose of him bringing this up here is because of the timeliness, because we as a department have been receiving a lot of calls about Colonial for a variety of reasons. We also had the water testing issue that, that came about where there was a lack of communication on behalf of Colonial that came about very recently. And with the E. coli? With Correct. the E. coli. Okay. And we, and we just want to make sure it's on the record at this, at this meeting so that the public can know that if they've got issues, this is their time to reach okay. out to DEP so that they can get those issues resolved because that's, that's how it'll might be okay. colonial. So, so important to know is who should they contact to get information? Should they contact the Board of Health? I would appreciate it if they would write to health, H-E-A-L-T-H, -E health at doverma.org. That is our general mailbox, health at doverma.org. And I will see to everything that is received going unfiltered okay. to the appropriate individuals. And again, since the question arose as to what I was talking about last night, I'll once again submit to you the okay. information that so, is taken so, from their reports indicating their failure to be in compliance. You have to understand, it was openly stated in public that the D, by the DEP that they do not have the time or the personnel to deal with smaller water companies. All they do is check off the box that a filing has been made. Mm -hmm. That's it. Right. right. So, Nobody so, writes it to so just to sum, so just to summarize for citizens, the permit is coming up for renewal. The application process is in place right now. Correct. There is a public comment period. We have been contacted by citizens with pro with issues that that they have with Colonial. So if they would like to get those issues addressed, they should send an email to health at dovermass.org okay. and we dot ma, and we will ensure that those comments or concerns get relayed to the and Mass DP. Is yes. that correct? Mm -hmm. That is correct. And okay. I think Jerry also wanted to make a point of saying that there were many conditions on the original permit that had not been satisfied. Right. A big part of why Jerry is probably saying that, as he mentioned just now, is the staff in DEP um, under the last administration and even further under this administration had their staffing cut by approximately more than half. And so a lot of things, a lot of filings that go in just get automatically um, sunsetted into approval. And Jerry wants to make sure that the citizens of Dover and the elected officials in Dover know that this is the case so that we can we can address the concerns of those okay. citizens. So now if any kind of concern well, that, that the, individuals have with Colonial? I'll, I'll give you the one that I voiced most heavily three years ago. And that was Colonial was implementing absolutely no attempt to indicate the necessity for conservation. What was strange was the original 2010 permit had restrictions on the amount of water the colonial would, could you draw and had explicit conditions on colonial to improve its efficiency, reduce its consumption, cause its consumers to reduce their consumption, and required colonial to enter into an education process with their customers as to being better consumers, none of which has ever occurred. And the statement that they made on their website and the statement that they published on Nextdoor is fallacious because they attributed to the DEP certain conditions for limitations from 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. And there is absolutely no support or existence of such a statement by the DEP. All right. So, so okay. if citizens, so again, and we can say it at the end of the meeting, the, the colonial water permit has come up for renewal. There's a public comment period now. If you have concerns about the operations of, of colonial water, please send an email to health at doverma.org, and we will ensure, the Board of Health will ensure that those comments get relayed to the DEP. Now, as to the question and, you and, and there's three, you, it's a short window. You only have an, until November 3rd to get oh, your, I, I or, well, we'll say November 3rd to get your comments to the, process. right, so you have some right. time. So, so please get your comments by November 1st to the Felix, Board of Health. Jerry, I just, just a couple of quick, quick comments, just yes. with what you gave us. The expiration date is February 28th, 2029. No, it's not. 
actually, I, I know what you're saying. It, it, it was not there. This is this printout is from some years ago. Okay, it's right. been changed. Right. And the current process now requires them to file a renewal. Mm -hmm. So this document will become supplanted. Right. <clears throat> so the doc this document, and, and I would assume, and I'm not just, I'm not in any and way. That's probably true for all probably, public Thank you. Documents. Thank you. It, uh, that's what I was getting to. Yeah. And, and I don't know that, and I don't know if you know uh, that. I do know it only in that Dwayne made clear that he was buried by this task of getting up everything back up to date. We are fortunate to have one of our citizens in Dover who is named. Was. Back was. in 2010. Right. Was. Was. And I'll bet he would be a good resource. Very possible. Yeah. A very good resource. So, uh, and I apologize, Madam Chair, I just, I, I would suggest that take this in the context, that we take this in the context mm -hmm. as you're describing and certainly make it clear to our citizens that we, the board, and your board, are not the compliance board. Right. And, 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 and there again, is going to be something I will raise that I've given to Chris. Right, but not it. this evening. This evening we're going to address. So right now this is if citizens want their voice heard about Correct. their displeasure with the operations of Colonial Water, they can send right. an email. Now, Felix, have, Felix, have you talked to Ian? To Ian Bowles? No. Jerry? No, because it's so many years since he ceased being on the board of, on the, as the secretary. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Understood. Okay. So uh, as to the issue of the water testing, uh, last night, Madam Chair, you raised a question about comparison to what colonial tests versus what we were going to test. And I'd like to introduce two documents. One is a document which Colonial is by regulation obligated to supply their customers. I am told that customers have don't receive this. That would not be inconsistent with other documents that are not received. Oh, I'm pretty sure I got I get a report annually on okay. testing. This this clearly spells out in the last several pages what they test for, and I and will give you a comparison of what we propose to test. For. And there is a very great amount of similarity. Okay. In fact, we so, have you know a what? subset. Should we take a step back so that people know what we're talking about? Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, the water committee at town meeting was a, there was a warrant article and the approval was made to, to measure groundwater and test water quality. And so over the past year, the Water Committee has been working. I believe you hired a consultant, Kleinfelder, and you've been working with them. We drilled. Did we have to drill monitoring wells, or yes, were they already in place? Uh, so we drilled monitoring wells on town property, correct? Well, and have we done initial baseline testing of no, water levels? Nothing. All no, right. So, so, so to testing to date has not. So we're going to do the the water level testing and the quality testing simultaneously? Yes, uh, may I introduce myself? Yes, uh, that, yes, that would be great. So my name is Ron Myrick, and I'm on the Water Resources okay. Committee. And uh, professionally, I'm a licensed site professional and an environmental engineer. And uh, I work with Jerry and the rest of the committee, and we developed a work plan uh, that was oh. approved at town meeting right. and, and implemented. So at this point, the wells are in. Okay. The scattering of wells across the town. Uh, get a snapshot of, of what we have for water levels, and then track those water levels over time. Right. Through. So we would expect when there's drought conditions, we'd see water levels drop. And when we have water conditions like we had this year, water levels would rise. And the idea is over time, we really get the feel for what's happening, and then connect that information with what we're seeing from residents. Maybe they're having problems with their wells. Uh, and another component was to understand do we have groundwater contamination issues? This town you wouldn't expect. It. We don't have a lot of industry. We don't have a lot of documented releases. If you go to any surrounding towns, you'll see thousands of releases of oil and hazardous materials, and that's what we're looking for, or a component of what we're looking for. And that those are the contaminants that will be reportable to the state. So I can understand why it can be concerning to test and 
potentially put the selectmen in a position where why did you test and find this problem? Um, I think I would compare it to doing a, an evaluation of, of a newer home before you sold it. So you hire someone to look and do an evaluation of the home before you sold it. You wouldn't expect problems with a newer home or a town like Dover. You wouldn't expect contamination. But if you found it, you might want to know why. So the, most of these wells are in areas where you wouldn't expect to have spills. The only real documented spill that is known is in this the area is, is the mobile right. gas station. Now, in, there are 14 wells that we drill, all on public property, not on residential home property. As Ron says, you wouldn't expect much. And I explained to Chris that to my understanding, with some historical background, that there are probably only four likely types of contamination we might run into. An example, the well on Haven Street, which is next to the USGS stream flow, is probably in the plume of what was the mobile MTBE contamination. It would not be unusual that we might pick that up. And the result would be, if the result is attributable to a release that's known, it's not a new reportable condition. Right. Mm -hmm. The second possible, and I would say even likely, contamination that might occur, we deliberately picked a location on Main Street, the oldest street in the town, where in the late 1600s, there weren't even outhouses. Then there were outhouses. Then there were cesspits. Then there were cesspools. There were farms. There were farms with manure stockpiles. You get the drift. Mm. So it would not be unexpected if we would find that there are nitrates in the water. This, unfortunately, is not an uncommon occurrence because nitrates are sourced, whether they be from pre-existing farms, from septic systems, or the like. And the Board of Health has a regulation that requires that a homeowner, when they transfer title, or when a new well is put in, one of the components we are very clear on is the presence of nitrates. Now, the result of finding that above a supportable level is that we ask that they put in a reverse osmosis system. It may be as cheap as 40 or $50 on the kitchen, or some people say, I'll do my whole house. But it's the responsibility of the homeowner, and only when they find it in their own drinking water of their own well. So that's a second possibility. So I, I think the important thing to understand is it's those health-related issues, meaning uh, oil and hazardous materials is a class of compounds. So there's a list on the DEP site. These are what are regulated and require reporting to Mass DEP in the event you find above a certain concentration. A lot of the, of the compounds or, or classes of, of analytes that are on that list are more Board of Health issues because they're the same. And, and there's certain, and there's, there's, we actually took off E. coli because E. coli in a monitoring well, well, the reason it could be there is just cross contamination from the sampling method. So we try to find those type of, of compounds or, or, or classes of compounds that provide some kind of information about overall quality. And that includes oil and hazardous materials under, we call it volatile organic compounds, which are VOCs. Um, and then there's this new class for the PFAS. Right. And I, I have this was the last update from the state some time ago. And as I've mentioned to Chris, uh, we've been going to meetings since January, Ron, as I have. Uh, and the state has yet to come out with a firm understanding of either the health risk, and I'll say if any or the limitations on a test in terms of how many parts per trillion. But we don't know. And just for the record, so it's well understood, while we originally hadn't included it because we were starting to develop this even before this bloomed in the public mind with the press in the Boston Globe and the Cape Cod Times and elsewhere. Franklin. We did think to add it, but then realized the primary interest would be in the schools. 
The Dover Regional School System is supplied by the Town of Medfield Municipal Water. It is a public water supply company. It will be obligated at such time as a standard is issued for testing for PFAS, POA, PFOS, all of those chemicals. It will be obligated to do the testing, which will cover the question of whether or not it is present or not in the drinking water in the school. I know everybody's seen the Stowe Mass article in Boston Globe, and I have to tell you that there was dramatic overreaction by that town. The Chickering School is supplied by a well owned by the town in Carroll Park, operated by the Dover Water Department as a public water supply company, and therefore in a manner exactly akin to the situation of the region, it will be obligated also to test and also to report. So at that point, our view is the major concerns are the children of the schools, that's going to be handled by the state regulatory process, and therefore, that's the story there. But just so you understand about this, understand that at this moment in time, none of us really know what's going to be going on. So. Right, so that was, you know, that clearly the uh, scope of work, because I did go back and look at the Kleinfeld contract, so the yeah. scope of work did not include PFAS, mm -hmm. and there was an email that was sent later on saying that they would have to amend the scope of work to include that. And so... May I respond to that? The contract goes back over a year ago before this even showed hey, up on the horizon. This, this is not an issue. I'm just okay. stating a fact. So yes. that the that state of work, mm -hmm. well, it hasn't been amended yet, but needs to be. We don't to. But then can, can, can they include PFAS testing if it's not? If we asked them to, and I had, I had provisionally picked two locations as test sites of the existing 14 where we might do it. It was a separate contract. It was a separate expense. Mm -hmm. We have not issued instructions to do it. And it, in my mind, given that shortly the state will be coming out with a standard and therefore the PWSs will shortly be having to do it. Can I ask a question, Madam Chair? Ron, in, in your professional work, the office research standard guidelines, wouldn't they be the one that would establish this? So right now they have a guideline value of 70 parts per trillion. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's intended to inform the public water suppliers, if you have a concentration of 70 or higher, you need to take steps to get that concentration back. And okay. what, what are those steps? Thank you. Uh, yes. Identifying sources to mitigate them. So sometimes it could be the Teflon tape, uh, tape on, on the pipe. <laughs> mm -hmm. It could be that one well was close to firefighting training. Foam, yeah. And foam, foam and, from and, and, and a fire. say, all right, let's turn that well off and use this well. Okay. So it's identified, and that's happening on the Cape. Right. Barnston County so, is right. So, so this is so the discon. So we're we're testing monitoring wells. So those monitoring wells are not a source of water At to all. anybody. Correct. So. Potentially, so what is our responsibility just just to report what we find, and then homeowners, if they want, can. I think that's exactly it. Okay. So let's say we, we sample a well in a neighborhood. Yeah. One of the sources could be septic systems, dryer sheets, vortex, clothing. But they all have PFAS, and it goes out. Yes, that we system. test for PFAS. It, it, true. It goes through a septic system and can end up in wells, and these chemicals okay. don't break down in the environment. Mm -hmm. The information that this will provide is, it exists in this well, it's proximate to your home, there's no reporting obligation at this time. Other than there is a reporting obligation to the town of Dover to say we tested these monitoring right. wells, we, we they're have, not a source of water. Mm -hmm. not to the DEP. At, at this point, there is no reporting obligation to the state. That will change. That could change as soon as December or January. They're looking at a number of 20 parts per trillion. So we're talking about a couple of eyedroppers in an Olympic-sized pool. That's the type of concentration we're talking about here. And Very little. But their concern is, 
We all intake these chemicals every day through the food we eat, mm -hmm. and water is more controllable. So let's get those numbers down low enough. So this is kind of the background on why we have such a low number. Right now, I, my project is at the Martha's Vineyard Airport where we have 42 treatment systems on people's homes who live down gradient of the airport. And, and there we're seeing concentrations up to 1,500 parts. But the airport is the source of the, so, the, so then the airport is responsible for the Correct. cleanup. And, and in Stowe, the issue was it was approximate to the Massachusetts Firefighting Academy where obviously it was heavy gas. The airport's required on a monthly basis to go through training where they actually go out they and fray, exactly. spray the foam to put something out. So, so my one question got answered. Yeah. The monitoring wells are right. Okay. So can I just make one thing clear? Well, it, it's a very helpful conversation and it's a very helpful dialogue, right? So, so thank you for, for all of that in the history. But what we have to be mindful of is our authority, your authority, the town's authority, can't supersede something that's established right now. I'm sorry, I'm not sure what that because is. Because we're, we're, you're talking about permitting, you're talking about testing, I'm you're sorry, talking permitting? about... There, so the permitting is completely separate to this conversation. I don't know the, to this. When you were, we, at the beginning you talked about the time the time oh, for the colonial. colonial. Well, that's that's that's, that's completely separate. separate. So testing. We're focusing on our testing. So we right now are focusing on the Kleinfeld engagement mm -hmm. to measure the water level as well as what lack of call it well, as level flow and as well as quality. It might be easier if y'all actually sat down. That way they could well, all see. So that that could they actually all so see you at the same. Like at the Let same me time, give you, uh, you have what the state tests for yep. in that CCR that I handed you. This is what we indicated and did publish. We, we supplied it to the board. I will tell you, you'll notice the date. We didn't finally settle on it until September 11. But if you look at the original cover letter, it goes back to June. And the difficulty was negotiating price for the testing, which came down a very sizable amount over a period of time. So that, to some extent, delayed the, the start, because we wanted to have a firm basis of what it was going to cost. Well, okay. I, I believe the study's delayed about four months right now. It's, no, the study is actually the, not delayed. The testing is delayed. Well, the testing, we would have liked to have gotten started probably in August. We, were, we, it, we sent out solicitations to six or seven different qualified water quality testing companies, and we got back only one response. Why? My suspicion is nobody wanted to commit to having this type of a job and have it where they had to come out to Dover, one of them's in the western part of the state, for example. Uh, and again, we limited ourselves to those who Kleinfelder felt were qualified. I have to explain to you that there are many water quality com testing companies that are listed by the DEP, which the DEP wishes it could take off its list because the DEP has determined they're not qualified, but they All right, so let's, so, so let's focus on... So, where we were intending to start on, I believe it was the 26th, and go through the 2nd or 3rd of October. And that would have given us test results, certainly by about now, which would allow Kleinfelder and us to begin drafting a report which would take several months on the quality issue while we were also accumulating depth numbers and well, flow numbers. Well, it's not the quality issue, it's just the quality results. We don't know that there are issues. It's oh, just yes, correct. I'm, I'm not suggesting that there are issues. Mm -hmm. I mean, the truth of the matter, as Ron said, this is a town which has had almost no industry. And the spills are very obvious. There is the town transfer station, as you're sh I'm sure you're aware, which was its own source of contamination, and the town dealt with that according to the state and the MTBE mobile issue. Other than that, it's been essentially farm chemicals and septic chemicals right. and nitrates. Right, but again, just to make it clear, 
what is being tested on monitoring wells, not water sources, That's and the not, information, not, not, drinking water not water sources. drinking sources, and the information, once the report is done, will be made available yes. to all citizens so, of the town. So and with that, at, they if, can determine. If you look at this, this is what we settled on. It shows on the left hand side what we were going to have tested. And on the right hand side is what the Board of Health obligates a citizen to have tested. And you'll notice that the monitoring well tests are a dramatic subset of what we already require of homeowners. With the and exception you, of PFAS. Well, that was added as an afterthought, as I told you, to get a price to see what it would be. And if we were to do it, it would be an add-on to the contract, which we have actually not gone through with. Now, if you wish us to, we can. But at this moment in time, there is not an intent. Now, I would point out that the right-hand side, which is what we obligate a citizen to do, is almost a complete subset of what the state does. There are a few items we don't require that are in the CCR that relate to contamination that occurs when you chlorinate water. We don't put chlorinate water. We also don't test for copper or zinc. So you, you can notice that there are some small differences, but in terms of real health issues, we are at, uh, very much in lockstep with the state on what we ask the homeowner to test as a matter of health. But that is not what the monitoring wells are because they're a dramatic smaller set. Felix, would you like to add something? I just wanted to clarify also. The results that come back from the monitoring wells, uh, from the monitoring wells, the only things that would be reportable, as Ron said earlier, are, are things that are controlled under its mass contingency plan okay. um, as reportable items. So things like nitrates that fit that Jerry is saying we should expect high number of nitrates, that's not something that would be even reportable for the state okay. because we're not a, it's not a drinking water. All right. So, so, so the list here of what we're testing are nitrogen nitrates, nitrate, and, and nitrite, nitrate. And nitrite um, VOCs, volatile organic chemicals, pH, manganese, sodium, chloride. Though that's what we agreed to, and I'm assuming what's reportable are the VOCs. That's the predominant issue. That, that's the only one on the list? And, and the only, um, I have to be correct, technically if you had a really, really high pH or a really, really low pH okay. and became a hazardous waste, that would be reportable. Okay. If you, so if you what, so just, just, yes. just for someone that doesn't know, what would cause pH to go up? It, your pH going up would be alkalinity. Okay. And that's actually the total alkalinity. So if you, if you took a pH of bleach, it would be very high. Right. That's the only situation. Okay. I mean, I, 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 All right. Technically, that could okay. be reported to the state, but realistically, it's VOCs. All right. And we would expect to see VOCs in any monitoring wells close to the center of town because of the mobile uh, well, potentially. oil so potentially. 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 But we don't have. Yeah, okay. We, we avoided the direct center of the town okay. because we know what's here. Mm -hmm. All right. And the plume went from where the mobile gas station is down toward Crowbrook which is why the monitoring well is where it's located. Okay. So most of this report is informational for the town with the exception of us because we're testing for VOCs. That's something we would report those levels to the state regardless, oh, yeah. oh, if we found them and regardless of what the levels were. Is that a correct statement? There is a standard. Okay. So there's levels for all these compounds. Okay. If you exceed that, that's well, when you report it. Okay. Condition, usually it will be within 120 days. Okay. But not for things like nitrate, just sodium, VOCs. any of that, just VOCs. Okay. So one of the one of the reasons why we wanted to have testing like this, and one of the reasons why we wanted to have graphs showing groundwater, is people moving into the town that have always had public water. This report gives them information that a about public water company. What right. it is to have private wells. Mm -hmm. What does that mean? And, and, and I think what we would see, I cannot guarantee it, is we're going to see Mountain Detect. 
we see acceptable levels in mm -hmm. most, well, if not all, of these but, but there are certain things that we're also seeing trends of you know, and hearing from other towns that they're concerned with, things like manganese, for example, that we don't really get many high numbers of. But Sherburne, for example, has a concern that as fracking is increasing, they're seeing higher numbers when of higher amounts of manganese because it's being released when you break the ledge. Okay. So we want to monitor that ourselves so that we know if we need to add an additional controls for manganese. Okay. Felix, well, control the control is uh, Felix, in, in the uh, <laughs> Office of Research and Standards, this letter came out in July. Are those standards cha How they did change? How implemented? Do they, this how is, often so do you're they talking about PFAS, some, yeah. which yeah. they're not, not is not about. part of the scope, and the standards but haven't been settled yet. Standards don't get settled. Do they get changed annually, typically, no. or is well, they're they're well, trying well, to they, determine. They, they some standards. May I just okay. interject? Last Thursday, the Water Resource Commission, which held its meeting in October after the Drug <coughs> Management Task Force meeting at 100 Cambridge Street. We went through a very significant, you're, you're aware of this, aren't you, the changes that were being put. I don't have the CMR rated here, I'm sorry, to the, to, the, to the CMR of exactly how they're aligning so this is not the standards the with the ETA. This is not made clear. So that actually the state is, the state is making less restrictive some of the standards because they're moving up to what the EPA says. So yes, there are changes that occur and the state implements those. They're not very often. No, I mean this is the first time in I think four years. So as, a, as an example, you talked about pH. People move into this town and don't recognize that the water is naturally acidic, which it is throughout New England, but there are parts of Dover where it is more acidic. Mm -hmm. This was, in fact, one of the conditions that was imposed on the predecessor water company, the Dover Water Company, and our intervening in the 1975 to 1978 time period, and forced the DPU to force the company to finally to begin to improve the level of the water and make it less acid because what was happening was that the acidity of the water was leaching the copper out of people's copper pipes, was causing the burnout of their cast iron boilers in their furnaces. Mm -hmm. And people have to understand that if they test their water and if it's excessively acidic, for example, the level of acidity before it was conditioned was 5.2, which is very acidic. Mm -hmm. So if someone tests their water and they find it's acidic, they need to put in a in-home water treatment system because it's protecting their home. Right. But just to be clear, colonial water that supplies water to 30% of the households in Dover, they are required Correct. to do testing. Under, well, they're also required to, right. in fact, condition the water. Right. Mm -hmm. And so, so right now, just to confirm, the list of of um, items to be tested that I read, those are the only items to be tested. And at a later date, when the we may add the PFAS to the testing, may, but not in this sure. time. Okay. I mean, we we have made no commitment to doing that. And we're testing monitoring wells only on town property. And it will take, after, after we get the samples, it will probably take three to four months for a report to be, to be written. And that report would be available to all citizens yes, of and Dover. Again, and again, they could been. use that report to determine whether or not they want to do additional testing Our on their properties. To the town, in the town meeting of 2018, was that we would provide prior to town meeting of 2020 a report that if it was desired could be further discussed in forums and if necessary at town meeting and if action was recommended the town meeting could look at that one of the actions i will suggest to you i've given to all of you i gave it to chris on thursday is the state in the drought management 
plan that just became actionable. And I've circulated this to you. It's hot off the press or hot off my okay, but that's But that's a different subject from what we're well, discussing it does today. Well, because there may be actions that result that the town takes, such as act of finding a means to conserve water. But, but right now, we appreciate you. Yes, Mr. Dole. Oh, Madam Chair, if I may, I just wanted to build off uh, the great point of kind of recapping at this point what the Water Quality Commission is looking or recommending to study. Uh, and we really appreciate kind of the, state, the distinction between what needs to be reported to the DEP and what is really just general information to the community. And perhaps, Ron, based on your experience, I think, you know, one of the things that I, I'd love to know, Madam Chair, certainly for the community is, so once that information is out there, right, assuming that there are certain levels of uh, various items, I mean, what does that look for the, for the community, right? Because I imagine, you know, they read a report and they see, oh, this is found in some monitoring wells. What does that mean to me, right? And then they're going to look to the to the town really for answers. So I don't know if you've had experience in other communities on kind of how best to articulate kind of what this means and what the next steps are for the community because water is such a critical resource and really so important, for folks. Here well, Felix, in your experience, you may also. So we we would have to develop a report explaining all of that, and that's part of the public information campaign that it would probably fall on me to okay. do myself and Jerry here. But there's so another piece that hasn't been mentioned, which is a critical part of that same report and of equal interest to all members of the town, and that is we've been collecting information on the changing characteristics of water availability, which was the impetus for this whole study now some four years ago. Mm -hmm. and. I'll, I'll, I'll let you read here. So, Felix, what are some of those? You know, what are some of those recommendations look like, right? Based okay. on other studies that have occurred in other communities, you know, what so can folks expect? It really depends upon what we find. I can't really project because because things are different in each area. If we see, for example, high sodium, we can we can, or we see, for example, high nitrates, we can recommend reverse osmosis. We can prepare. We can recommend different treatment techniques. Um, for that as part of our report, but, okay. but we, we just don't know yet. Realizing so, that we already have in place a mechanism to obtain that information from residents when there's a transfer of title, a new well, a so, modification to a well, and one of the concerns, the nitrates, we currently have in place a requirement that to one degree or another, that is mitigated through either low-cost equipment or if the homeowner wants a homeowner you know, home light system, they do it. And it's a matter of course and it just happens. Right. So I think what would be really helpful is when you do have the report, I think it would be extremely helpful if maybe you could come to a meeting and explain what you found and what well, some of the intense. options that are. Really because I, you know, I think this, as soon as people hear testing, they get nervous. And, um, and there's, there really seems to be no reason to be nervous about this. It's just information. And once we get the information, you know, we will, we will let citizens know what we found. And then it's up to them to, to determine if there's anything more they need to do or not. Well, I, cir exactly. I circulated to you a, a really, I think that's a great story. a real flaming right. article that was in the LA Times last week on the defense. And I said to Chris, but we're not the, we're not I, I, no, testing but, but the PFAS now. About where the public is getting its information, it's it's reading the Boston Globe, right? It's which is why the, which is why I think right Boston. right which which is why I think to have a report mm -hmm. you know from from professionals that's explained to people really helps allay any fears and misinformation that gets out there. Yeah. Understanding that, irrespective of this. The public water supply companies in this municipality will, of necessity, be testing and reporting on that other series of family of chemicals. Right. They will have to do that. And, and this is not going to be one and done with testing. Mm -hmm. So, oh, no. you know, and you'll right. Just, right. Just, just like as Jerry was saying, water levels. Right. One of the big impetus, as Jerry said, for this test, for the, these wells, was to figure out. 
the quantity of water. Correct. Mm -hmm. Because we're seeing as time is progressing, mm -hmm. water water is um, water is receding more and more. So I've been keeping track of it since I started. Um, actually, a how, less how long than have you been ago. here? Okay. Little, I've been with the board of health for a little less than a year. I've been Thank with you. the town for about three years now, two and a half years, three years, in, in my other capacity as a town employee. Um, but what I've been finding is that the vast majority of new wells that we're drilling are somewhere between 700, it is 700 and 800 um, feet deep. We have some that have been down 1,100 feet. Mm -hmm. The wells that we're abandoning are 200 foot wells, 300 foot wells, or even dub wells. And the reason that the transition is happening is because um, because we're just not getting the flow that we need. So these with these monitoring wells are going to help us determine um, determine what what the water quantity looks like, the availability, the availability of water, because there are standards also for how many gallons you need, how many gallons you need per person per day of water, and if you have to be drilling 1,100 feet or 700 feet to, in order to get water, that's going to raise questions um, for the town in the future, potentially, about, about um, mm -hmm. land development. Right. Because, because if you're drilling that deep, um, that's going to increase the cost of construction. That's going to make it even less affordable. But also, um, why it's happening is because there are more and more homes that are drawn off it. So the level is going lower. So we might end up having to look at additional use controls potentially in order to stabilize that. And that and that's you know really good information for us to have as as a town because that was always a concern. I know when the 48 Springdale came onto the market and there was potentially a multi-family development going in there, that was a big concern of citizens was water. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, because we're also we, protecting that water, and, and so this would help us get those answers. If I right. might, um, it might be scientifically and not anecdotally. Exactly. It might be right. beneficial to you if you took the time to go back to a presentation that was done now. I think it's three, maybe four years ago, which pointed out the changing legal basis for who owns water under the ground on which you stand. Now, historically, it was always, if I, if I own this land, I own this water, it, without exclusion. And that was English common law, it was early case law. And that is changing as the state has recognized that water is a shared resource. That if I am overdrawing from this well, all of my neighbors, if they are sharing the same basin, may suffer. Right. And you know, and that's and that's the same thing for the town of Dover. It's not just colonial water in, in, yeah. enforcing conservation measures. It's everybody in the town being everybody educated exactly. uh, because we're all draw, drawing from the same aquifer. So exactly. And if we see these numbers going deeper and deeper and deeper, right. that might cause the Board of Health, for example to update our well regulations to require a greater setback between wells. Because it's the further away you are, right. um, the less are going to be drawn off of your neighbor's well. Right. Just, like, just like looking at the quality data, um, looking at the quality data, if your septic system is adding nitrates and, those, and the soil is conditions enough that the nitrates trickle down into your aquifer, we might have to, we might have to recommend other setbacks. Between the, between the septic system and the well as well. So that's why we need. Just so you understand, this, this is getting to be more and more a concern in each permitting process that comes before the board where the septic fields are getting closer and closer and closer to the lot lines or of other properties. And as an example, the E. coli contamination that occurred on August 13th, which was announced on August 15th, was from a Draper well, Draper Road well. The setback that was in, 
that this was filed for, this zone one setback, which normally should be 400 feet, was reported as 334, did not apparently bother to take into account pre-existing homes with pre-existing septic systems that were much closer. And the E. coli contamination occurred in the period immediately following a very heavy series of rain saturating the ground. So you can understand what happens if you're not far enough away. Right. So we could do an entire meeting on water. This is fascinating. But I don't have any more questions. Mm -hmm. And I really appreciate all of you coming in here. I look forward to getting the report and learning about it. Appreciate all the work. I, I do and ask, and we'll have to talk about the, the extra ordinary cost of the water. That's right. a separate topic. Right. So thank you. Thank you all. Mr. Dwally, do you have something? Madam, yeah, to Madam Chair, if I may, I just, so based on the, uh, we saw the Water Resources Committee recommendation on what they want to test for. And so at this point, I know PFAS, it was yes, we are, no, we aren't. Is the recommendation at this point to, to not test for that? Um, well, not, I, not in this round, I guess. And I may be speaking of no, no, no. Because, because we have that extraordinary cost, because it might not be feasible for us to test for I, mean, I don't want to go over budget, number one. It's already an extra $2,000 that's occurred. I don't know if that is really to be borne by the study because it shouldn't have occurred. But, I mean, it's a financial question that's raised. It's 400 and some odd change per test for people. I think that's a decision by the, that the board of selectmen can instruct the board of health on if you feel you want to gain that information now in advance of when it will surely come out as the public water supply companies of Springdale Water Trust, Old Farm Trust, and the Colonial Water Company, the three resident water companies are obligated, and the water department of the town itself, or public water, are obligated to in fact test and publish those numbers. The two other water companies are actually supplied by Natick, and of course, those numbers will come from Natick. But it's up to you, if you feel you would like some advance notice, we can certainly look to see if we can, as we had contemplated, but not made commitment on, testing a couple of representative sites. Has the committee, if I may, has the Water Resources Committee made a, a kind of an official recommendation in one of your, your prior we public did. That was That was the meeting in September, but we are meeting next Wednesday, and we could certainly confirm that at that time. Ron, in your professional opinion, do you think, because we would most likely have to you know, test it next time around. Should we include it this time around, or? It's a complicated issue. Right. I think it's always good to get ahead of things if you see a potential concern and then you're hearing from the citizens, we think this is an issue we'd like to know about it. Uh, that being said, what do you do with the information? I don't like to just test and then get information and not right. have some kind of action. So if you collect a sample, from the monitoring well in the area, say, where the water supply that supplies chicken is, mm -hmm. and you see data that suggests a potential concern, there might be an action to test inside the school to see if the water's been impacted. Recognizing that the monitoring well that is near chicken is near the Dover Water Department's own well. So that's, that's where, if there's anything there, it's going to come out anyway when the Dover Water Department is obligated. So what, what the state is doing right now, Mass DEP is allowing water companies to test, and the state will, there's a program to actually fund that testing on a voluntary basis. So it might be rather than this, this action, do the testing, talk to those responsible for the water, introduce them to the Mass DEP program, and say, let's, let's talk about this, okay. and take it from that. That, yeah, that, that sounds like a good approach. Right. And, and the appropriate one would be Carl Warner. The, the, right. the issue here is there's no reason to believe that it's impacted. Right. It's just a hot issue. Right. And it has people concerned. Yeah. People hear PFAS 
and they see all this information. Well, about there was it, an they article, see that right? Half of Cape Cod probably has these issues, and it causes concern. So when when we started seeing this information come up, and we started seeing this concern in around the Commonwealth and around the country, we said, well. It's kind of our job as the committee to at least bring this up and say, hey, how do we best approach this? But it's not a simple right. answer. Right. It's not yeah. a simple and thing. again, realistically, given the history of the term, we've not had industrial waste. We've had, apparently, very little firefighting foam discharge, as an example. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking at probabilities, from those sources, it's perhaps not very high. If there are other sources, that's a different story. Felix, you wanted to add something? And I was just going to reiterate what Ron, Ron alluded to and Jerry alluded to, which is if the state is, over, is subsidizing funding for public right. water supplies, yeah. and the town has control over a public water supply through, through Carl oh. Warner, mm -hmm. um, why not instead of having us tested yeah. right now, where that water supply also covers a chicken school, why not direct Carl mm -hmm. to have the, the yeah. Dover water supply yeah. utilize that state? That right. state. I'd agree. I, I, so I, think, I think we should talk to, to Carl. Mm -hmm. And okay. I also so, agree. Right. I not, right. Thank you. not begin to speculate about probability, as, right. as you described. Right. I, Ron, right. I'd like, right. From our standpoint, I think that's the only prudent fiduciary thing that we begin to look at. Right. Well, so I think says, you will get out ahead. You don't want to be in the position of people coming to you and saying, "Why didn't you?" Right. Yeah. But that's that's an excellent recommendation and an, an avenue that we'll pursue. And if you could send us information to Chris, then we'll sure. we'll talk to Carl. So thank you. Thank you. So thank you all for coming in. We appreciate well it. Very if you well done. If you like to, if you would like to leave, we won't take it personally. <laughs> so go home and have dinner. I have to go to my daughter, my kids' school right now. Oh, <laughs> then please go. All right. Two nights in a row. Given. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thanks. So the next item of, I think the rest of the meeting will go pretty quickly. So the next item of business is the West Suburban Health Group Disclosure of Financial Interests. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so uh, I remember uh, this. Yes, yeah. <laughs> so the, the town of Dover is part of a, uh, a group of communities um, that collectively purchases uh, health insurance benefits. It was recently ruled from the State Ethics Commission from an incident as we speak about the Cape from the Cape about everything a, starts in the Cape everything starts in the Cape um, that's why we hired you we yes, knew you had yeah. all the experience yeah. you got it first yeah. right um, that there was a, a question raised as raised as to how could you vote uh, be a voting member of West Suburban Health Group when you are getting your health insurance from West Suburban Health Group so the State Ethics Commission has ruled that there is a, uh, a conflict there however um, communities can file a, uh, a disclosure of financial interest to continue to allow their representatives to be able to vote uh, on those matters, which are very standard and are very customary. So myself and Jerry Lane, the town treasurer, our members, our voting members of West Suburban Health Group, as are all the other communities um, who vote on health insurance rates and other health insurance benefits on a regular basis. So before you tonight is a, uh, is a request that, um, that you approve uh, this disclosure of financial interest of myself uh, and, uh, and Jerry Lane as voting members of West Suburban Health Group with a financial interest being that we do uh, get our health insurance through the town, through West Suburban Health Group. Understood. So if we didn't vote for this or make this motion, then we would have to be the voting yeah. members. So I, so I write, so I, I'm going to immediately move to approve pursuant to Mass General Law Chapter 268A, Section 19B, the exemption of Jerry Lane and Chris, Chris Dwelly's interests in serving the Board of Directors and on the Steering Committee of West Suburban Health Group as their interest is not so substantial as to be deemed likely to affect the integrity of the services which the municipality may accept from its employees. Seconded. Um, 
It's just us. All yeah. in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Anything? So, any of yes votes as long as we don't have to do anything. So I guess the next item of business is the municipal election to the Boston Regional Metropolitan Planning Organization. Yes, ma'am. So this is just a recurring uh, election that happens. Um, communities as a member of the uh, MAPC um, can uh, vote for various members for regional or various organizations within the MAPC. So those are listed here. There's four groups where communities um, uh, are on the ballot to represent those particular interests. Um, and it's, uh, it's up to the board if uh, they so choose to vote for these members and we can submit that on, uh, on the board's behalf. Can we make a motion to move for the slate of officers? Well, the problem is the, the there, is a con there, is there is a contested, a contested vote. Uh, okay. Metro West Regional Clarity. Right. And I don't know much about either, so I don't feel in a position to pick one over the other. You could not vote for that particular group okay. and vote for the rest if you so choose. Right. So that's the recommendation I would make to so vote I'm for the uncontested slate. And unless you know something about. I do not know either. Right. Mr. Mitchell or Ms. Spicer. So I would agree that the, the thing to do is to vote. We make a would Move we vote for the non-contested members in Acton, Somerville, Rockland. Um, that's it. And that's it. Right. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And then we have um, the update, Board of Selectmen's update, with Mr. Springett. In Italy, on vacation, he needed a vacation after <laughs> after town, the special town meeting, and I think we already gave an update. I think the town meeting was went really well. I believe it was the right answer for the town, and I think most people there did too. And now the hard work starts of putting the two plans together, and um, you know, keeping the group of stakeholders together so that we. We, we make sure that both designs of the building incorporate the needs of the, of the stakeholders. I agree. And then as far as the rail trail goes, last, last meeting, Friends of the Dover Greenway were here. We are going to, throughout town council, make an introduction to directly with the MBTA for the Friends. And we're going to begin the process of pursuing the Friends, taking being in charge of the lease or assuming the lease and the town and the friends will enter into an agreement for crossings and any other things that impact the citizens of the town. So we'll keep people abreast of, um, of that situation. And now we have the, um, I keep wanting to call it the superintendent update, the town administrator update. Just have a few quick things for the board this okay. evening. Um, one is, um, as has been discussed since about June, uh, Hill Reservation uh, is going through an endowment in the strategic planning process. Uh, they are essentially looking to conserve a, a portion uh, of, their, of their property at this point, and they're working collaboratively with uh, Westwood and Dover to create task force, task forces, task force, how do you say it? Is it task, task forces? forces? I think you're right. Uh, okay. Um, to really evaluate that proposal and make a recommendation to their respective um, boards of selectmen. Uh, so we have um, a handful of members from the Warrant Committee, representatives from the Warrant Committee, the Board of Selectmen has voted, John, last uh, week or two weeks ago. Thank you. We still have an opportunity for, um, for one citizen member at large, so I just wanted to uh, put that out there that we still have an opportunity if there's anyone out there this evening that would like to um, join or would be interested in joining that task force to review the proposal and to make a recommendation to the Board of Selectmen. Uh, it's about a once a month commitment uh, for the next four to six months and I'm happy to provide any additional information on that if anyone's interested. And do we have something on the website? Uh, we're working on developing okay. a page for the website okay. at this point, yep. I have a candidate that I oh. am going to be able to hopefully propose right. next week. But if there are, if anybody's watching and they'd like to participate in this, it could be a very fun project. You know, Hale does a lot of great things, and I think it's it's not known by many in town 
especially those that live over on the Wellesley side of town. So it would be a great way to get, be invo get involved in the town and um, not a huge time commitment. I'd like to congratulate uh, the town's um, town assessor, Amy Gao, who this week just received her uh, certification as a, uh, as a Massachusetts certified um, assessor. So I just wanted to give a shout out to Amy. And oh, congratulations. Well it's almost like being back in college, you know, <laughs> with all the coursework uh, and homework that they give you. So it's no small feat. So uh, it's a great thing, too, to have so our she's financial official team now? have these certifications. <laughs> she's official now. Yep. Um, and then uh, the last thing I just wanted to mention is that uh, I'll be providing the board, I'm working on drafting up um, a, uh, a kind of next steps process on, um, on the building process as it relates to Carroll and the variable, uh, or the various, I should say, procurement requirements that follow along with kind of the next steps as we procure a project manager and a designer and what that looks like in a timeline. So that will be, really be to you shortly. Right. Because yes. it is, it, it is a, there are got there is a framework that we have to abide by. It's we can't just right, well, right. We can't willy nilly do what we want. So yeah, and that's all I have this evening. Thank you. All right. You know, with Bob out of town, we could actually appoint him on a number of different things right now. <laughs> that would be that would be great. Notice how it isn't on the agenda. agenda. <laughs> right. So we do have the consent agenda, which includes special licenses for two events on October 17th, an event on October 30th, November 9th, and March 12th. Just two weddings. So two weddings and Do I have no a motion? <laughs> yes, I move to approve okay. the consent agenda as presented. I will second that. All in favor, aye. And with that, our meeting, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn the meeting. I second. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Good evening, everyone, and thank, thank you, you for joining us. Yeah.